European Colloquium of Arachnology held at Spain, uh, Greece uh, um, and Asian Conference of Arachnology held at Thailand and China, and thus refreshing his knowledge in this field frequently. So uh, we are lucky to have such an eminent person for the class today. And on the behalf of the team Saliga and all the participants, I welcome Sunil sir for the session. Over to you, Sunil sir. Thank you. Thank you. I hope everyone can see my slide as well as myself. No? Yes, sir. Of course. Yeah. Can see you. you can see my slide also. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Before I start, I would like to appreciate the effort of Team Saliga because uh, I have been in this field for some 20 years, from 2000 onwards, I'm working on spiders. So far, nobody has uh, undertaken a venture like this. Maybe um, before it was very difficult to conduct a meeting. Now, because of online platform, it becomes more easy to conduct webinar, especially for participants in different parts of the world, as well as different parts of the world, can easily join in a webinar. Now, uh, basically, I before I come to my topic, I would like to tell something about the technology in India. And the arachnology, uh, as far as uh, in, uh, biodiversity, yeah, generally speaking, is highly neglected, though everyone uh, speak about biodiversity. In practical sense, we people do very little. And that is the case with arachnology also. And usually I see two kinds of people interested in biodiversity. One amateur biologist who do a lot of field work. And they will be collecting a lot of information about different organisms. They will be producing a lot of good photos. But in the end, very few amateur biologists actually publish anything. So what happens is that most of the data or most of the information they have collected become unutilized, or in a sense, become useless. Right? And another group which is interested in biodiversity are the university professors apology processes and the scientists in various research institutes. Their problem is that in order to do some kind of research, they need some research grant. Unless we give very strong proposal supported by something of current relevance, the grant giving bodies usually won't up. So that is another problem. And for the university and college professors, there is absolutely no incentive for carrying out uh, this kind of research project. So that maybe one or two percent of the college teachers are actually involved in research work. The vast majority of college teachers don't actually won't undertake any kind of research project because there is no no uh, no incentive. That is the main reason. Even if even if doing a research project means taking a lot of trouble. But even after taking so much trouble, if something goes wrong, he has to pay for his own salary. But if, if everything goes well, absolutely no, no, no incentive. So because of this kind of thing, majority 98% of our community just won't venture, won't venture to do the research project. And what happens is that if college teachers aren't, won't come into the research project, few research scholars will get the opportunity. Or for, for example, to me, there are four research scholars. If 25 teachers in my college are doing, are having PhD guideship, that means 25 into 4, under scholars can get the opportunity. But this is not happening. The main reason I told you is that we don't get enough support, enough, uh, enough motivation from uh, from the UGC or from the government in India. So that, that seriously affects the studies of biodiversity. And as far as arachnology is concerned, very few people are actually coming into the arachnology because uh, there is a lot of problem. Even after completing a PhD in arachnology, it won't be unless you get into a job like that of a college professor, your knowledge in that field become useless. 
So that is a, the, the career opportunity in a field like biodiversity is very less. But that is not the case in other developed countries. If you go to, if you take the case of most of the developed countries like Australia, Canada, or USA, in each village or in each locality, there will be a ecologist or a tax or an entomologist or a biodiversity assessment. Such posts are there. But in India, we don't have such posts. That is also one, the one reason why very few research scholars are coming into this area. Then it involves a lot of field work. Our research scholars are are usually not that much interested in carrying out the field. So it is in this background that I would like to uh, approach your effort because that's why, because nobody has done an effort like especially for promoting the study of spiders. And I would like to appreciate and also congratulate the team like uh, Abhijit and Prashant and whoever else are also involved in that for this wonderful effort of promoting study of spiders in India. So congratulations once again. And with this background, I would like to start my presentation. Uh, Actually, you, going into going into the study of bio spiders, I will first show you a small slide. Here you can see. Generally speaking, we have a lot of notions about spiders. Spiders are generally considered as ugly creatures. Another is that they are loathsome creatures. Nobody likes that and this dangerous creatures, poisonous creatures, and people also consider them as useless creatures. Most of this impression about spiders are, came into uh, the mind of people because of the spider. This giant crab spider, um, scientifically known as Hitrocoda villager. This is the common spider which we find in our household. Because wherever there is some humidity or wet, wet surface, wet area, these spiders are usually common. It is because of the presence of this spider, most of us consider spiders as dangerous as well as useless creatures. So, and before go, and I would like to first tell you I, another slide that you can see here is that here you can see a slide. I have written that if you look at this spider, there is some similarity with the face of a human being. Actually, there is no there is no uh, similarity. We see a human face in that because our mind has a tendency to come there. Something we don't know with something we actually know. So we try to find a similarity with human face. That is why we can find a, a human face in that. Other than that, this is simply a marking. I put this slide because how I just want to show you how wonderful and miraculous these creatures can be. Now, the, although most people consider spiders are dangerous, ugly, and useless things, actually spiders are a, are, a, are a group of beautiful organisms, just like our birds and butterflies. Now, another thing that I, I want to show you, I will show you one more slide. In that slide, you can see a dress. This is a dress actually made from spider silk. And, and this, uh, uh, this is now, uh, now displayed in a museum in London, the Victoria and Albert, Albert Museum in London. Actually, the, this, silk, this dress is produced from the silk of golden orb spider, the type of Nephila spider that is present in Madagascar. Scientifically, this spider is known as Nephila pilipus malagil. That means, if you look in the sunlight, it appears golden in color. And this gold carotenoids in it. So the presence of carotenoid pigments, the silk of the spider is yellowish in color. And the silk and the dress you have, you are seeing right now, the, is produced from the undyed silk of the spider. Now, I, I, I have understood that it took around four years for a team of 89 people to collect enough amount of silk to produce this dress. That was produced in 2009. So this is one, one idea where you can see how spiders can be of use. Now I will show you some more examples of uses of spiders before I go into the details of that. Here you can see the golden orb work. This is the Nephila pilipus malagas. 
subspecies and nebula phyllipus, which is also present in our area. Now, in the next slide, you can see nebula phyllipus present in our Western Ghats. There are two images of the nebula phyllipus. Now, if you come to the nebula phyllipus, nebula phyllipus is an interesting case because in this nebula phyllipus, Many of you might have seen Nephila pyelipus. It's, a, it's a, a good example of extreme level of sexual dimorphism. The male is very small, almost like a mosquito, and females are very thin, around more than 1.5 inches in length. Now, that, now, the importance is that uh, it is a perplexing problem for evolutionary biologists. What who actually become, whether it is male dwarfism or it is female gigantism? Is a question perplexing the evolutionary biologist. Now, who has actually gone to the extreme? Now, there is a, now the, the explanation given by the evolutionary biologist shows that by being small, male has an advantage. The advantage for the male is that by being very small, male can move very fastly and can also mate very fast and also escape from being caught by the spider quickly, female spider quickly. So, that is the advantage of being very small. So, it can move very fast. But for, but for the female, being larger is also of an advantage. But evolutionary biologist says that usually the male spiders have a tendency of plugging the female reproductive opening with a or mating plug. It's a gum like material. They put on the female reproductive opening so that no more males will mate. It is an attempt by the male uh, to, uh, to make sure that his own genes are pass to the next generation. The female will produce its own young. That is an evolutionary strategy. But the female wants to have maximum number of young ones. Or in, she, she wants to have more fecundity to produce as much, as much young ones as possible. So if by the, and because of that female increased the size or nature, natural selection favored a larger female size in female. Because for a larger female, because of the larger size, this small mating plug put by the male spiders, spiders usually ineffective. Another problem is that being larger in size, it also en enables female to avoid the genital injury during the mate. So being like being smaller means the male has a better chance of escaping from being caught by the female. So both are actually benefiting. So that is why you can find an extreme case of sexual dimorphism in the case of the Nephila pyelipus. Now, Nephila pyelipus is a very interesting case. A lot of studies are going on because now this Nephila pyelipus is, is, um, is uh, used as a biosteel. One minute. Sand, please allow the recording. Oh. Okay. okay, sir. Yeah. I forgot to record. Yeah, yeah, I am recording. Okay, okay. Yes. Now it's okay because uh, sir, uh, it may be useful for us later. Yes, yes. Uh, pardon me, sir. Okay. Uh, can I uh, stop your video so that we will get? Uh, uh, yeah, it's okay. Band. You can stop. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. Okay. okay. No problem. We can oh. stop the video. Sure. Yeah. Okay. In this of. So in this of Nephila. Nephila silk is now. Now, uh, consider as a biosteel. I will tell you why it is used as a biosteel. Because if you look at the, if you, if you take the case of nephila fiber, you take a one millimeter diameter nephila fiber, and you take a one millimeter uh, fiber of steel, the nephila fiber will have more strength. So it is more like, it has more strength and more tensile strength. The next slide, you can see the details of that. Here, if you look at that, the Elongation ability of the nephila is around 35 percent. Whereas, if you convert that with the kevlar, kevlar is the material used for producing bulletproof resin. 
and that is on the elongation if that is one of the hardest material can prevent the uh, passing of a, a prevented bullet from passing it through that but it this ne nephila silk is more stronger in strength compared to kevlar and because of these qualities we usually consider nephila silk as a bio steel because it has a the, the it's a, it, it can withstand this uh, breaking strength to a larger extent that also the energy to break it is around uh, several times higher than the, that of the and uh, that of the kevlar you can see that so that is why the nephila silk is considered as a bio steel now another important uh, and the reason why this uh, is Einstein in this picture is the explanation for the increase in strength of the fiber. Now, usually in the east of spider, they have a special strength. Uh, uh, this is the ultra Hello, Sunil, sir. Hello. Hello, Sunil, sir. If Pardon me. Look at the ultra structure, there will be a repetitive uh, uh, units of two amino acids. One is glycine, other is alanine. And these two amino acids are present in a repetitive manner. Scientists say it is because of this repetitive nature of this um, that much can increase the tensile strength and stability. So, any problem? Any problem? Sir, your uh, voice was breaking. Now it's okay, sir. Hello, 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 Sunil Jo, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your voice was breaking. Now it's okay, sir. Yeah, okay. no problem. I will say this in months. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Now it's okay. Can you see? Yeah, uh, we can see your screen, but uh, still uh, voice is breaking now. Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, your voice is breaking now, sir. We can we can see your screen. Yeah. Then I will do. I will uh, log out and log. Okay. Okay. Wait for some time. Then I will leave. Yeah, okay. No, I now, I will leave and rejoin again. Then it, I then it I think now it's okay, sir. We, we can hear you. Prashant? Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, is he rejoining again? Yeah. Yeah. Sir? yeah. Yes, yes. Just wait for two minutes.
प्रशांत जस्ट एडमिट yeah. yes, yes. हेलो सुनील जोश सर या वेलकम बैक हेलो प्रशांत या हेलो कैन यू देन आई विल आई विल सेंड वन सर यस सर ओके So now, can you see? Yes, sir. We can see your slides. Can you see the slide? Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And yeah, then. Yes, sir. I think yeah, we can start. Okay, let me then continue. Yeah. So what I was uh, telling you is about the special qualities of the nebula cell. In this nebular cell, it has a special arrangement of this uh, amino acid. There are two important amino acids present in there. That is glycine and alanine. And this glycine and alanine are present in a repetitive nature. The type of protein that we can find in this uh, spider silk is pyrroin. And the spidroin is usually formed of this repetitive glycine and alanine block. That is why the the spider silk has that much increase of tensile strength and other extensibility, uh, elongation it will. So that is the case. So that is regarding the physical uh, uh, nature of the spiders. I mean, I will show you another uh, potential uh, idea. That is. This is a field for producing spider. The problem with the spider silk is that, as I told you in the beginning, it produced a dress, and for producing that dress, it took four years, and and uh, around 89 people are also participated in the silk collection. But so producing that much amount of silk is not easy in nature. So researchers are now thinking of biotechnological methods for producing silk. Silk. So this is one attempt for producing in the, so more amount of silk. And I will show you another slide. This is the case of a ballooning techniques. If we, we discovered flight ability by in nineteen or three, and our right brothers discovered flight. When much before that, spiders are capable of flight. Actually, the spiders have an ability called the spider ballooning. Ballooning is similar to flying kites. So ballooning is sometimes also known as kiting. What what happens is that the spider will be releasing silk thread like this, as you can see in the image. When the silk thread catches the catch the wind, that the spider becomes airborne. So by this mechanism, spiders can easily reach far off islands, several hundreds of thousand kilometers away from their homeland. So this is a this is a technology that has been used by spider for millions of years ago. It's for dispersal to far off uh, places. Now in some families like Linifidae, the spider ballooning is quite common. Now I will show you one more, few more uh, uses that our spiders can use. This is a Repairing or regenerating of neurons. Here you can see this uh, this pink color material that is a uh, uh, spider silk produced from Nephila clavicus, and this is the this narrow threads are the 
uh, nerve fibers. The blue one are the shawn cells. So by using a, a spider silk as a base or support material, the scientists are here regenerating, helping in the regeneration of a nerve fiber. By this technique, they could produce a nerve fiber of up to six centimeter in length. So this is another area where spiders can be of immense use for mankind in future. Now, uh, recently, uh, why I am uh, showing you all this, uh, generally our people have a tendency to think spiders are just uh, useless creatures. They won't be of any help. So I also started uh, looking for what would be the possible uses of spiders. That's how I found all of this. Now, a few more uh, cases will I will show you before I go into my topic. And recently, uh, the scientists have discovered another thing called biolens. Here, there is a lens produced from the uh, this falsida family of spiral falsida. But this uh, this is a very recent development from the University of um, uh, one university in Taiwan, Taipei City One. They produced this bio lens using the silk produced from this fiber. So advantage of this spider, uh, spider this, uh, this bio lens is that this bio lens can increase the magnification by two or three times. That is, if we are using this kind of bio lens made up of spider silk, we will be able to see the micro, the micro structure of an external insect, the exterior of an insect body more closer than we can than it is possible with the conventional glass lens. So that is one uh, one advantage of violence. And violence are also it can also used in the imaging and, and the scanning machine, scanning and imaging machine that we can that, that can be used in hospital. So by this method the, they can have increased quality in imaging. So that is some opposable advantages of biolens. Now another is the okay, so this is also a, recently I, I found in newspapers that painkillers can be produced from tarantulas. Now if you uh, in this of this the, the the photo that you are seeing here is a Chinese bird spider, scientifically known as Cereopagopus smithi. Cereopagopus smithi. Now. Uh, the, the some scientists at the University of Queensland in Australia, they extracted the venom or poison from this uh, uh, spider, and they are now using it as a painkiller. And it has been found very effective in in, uh, in mice, so that there is a possibility that it can be used also as a painkiller or as a during anesthesia. Uh, presently, we are using. Uh, the painkillers were mostly made from opium or opium related products. The problem with these painkillers is that these painkillers always cause a uh, lot of constipation after the surgery. But if you are using this kind of biological painkillers produced from tarantulas, these kind of problems like constipation won't be there. So, this is another area where we can, where spiders can be of immense use in the society. Now, generally speaking, whenever we say what are the uses of spiders, we, we, everybody will uh, uh, tell us that spiders are good predators and they can be a good, that can be utilized in the biological control of pests. That's, that's something everybody knows, but uh, nobody knows how, how effective this can be. One study at the Cornell University by one professor called Linda Raya, he found that the spiders the, will be eating, that, is, that all the spiders on this world can eat more, more prey than the combined weight of, than the combined weight of all the human beings on the earth. That is, she estimated that there could be some 25 million tons of spiders in the world, and they, that will be eating around 800 million tons, and tons of prey every year. So, that this shows that spiders can be highly effective in controlling our 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 the, our insect population, especially the prey population. What we can do to increase the spiders in our area is that we have to plant more trees. If if there is deforestation is taking place, spiders won't be having enough uh, enough um, 
enough uh, enough uh, enough branches to build the orb web so that that will decrease the population of spider so if you want to increase the population in your garden the only the what you can do is that you have you should plant more trees more shrubs so that spiders can easily put their orb web. now one more now another interesting thing about the spider is that always people this is another area now here you can most of you might have seen this kind of photo uh, photos in uh, whenever we go to the field whenever spiders get a uh, capture an insect they will be covering it with this silk by this technique the spiders can prevent the decay of this prey for several days so if you can make a bag using spider silk and we can use that bag uh, to keep our vegetables or food stuffs instead of keeping in a fridge. So it's a very low cost energy efficient method of uh, preserving your food. Presently, nobody has discovered a technology like that using spiral. But there is a possibility that we can, use, we can use this kind of techniques used by spiders for preservation of our food. Now, Generally, everybody might have heard that female spiders eat male spiders. What would be the possible reason? Of, um, uh, I also uh, try to understand what, why the female spiders are eating. And what I would understand is that one theory is, uh, says that he is, uh, is going to mate again. Because by one mating itself, the male becomes very weak and usually die after some time. So that uh, uh, the purpose of his life is already fulfilled. So the what evolution, but the evolutionary balance is male is offering himself as a prey to the female. Is if he can and uh, increase the health of the female so that the female can produce better eggs. That is why. In several species, the male is offering himself as a prey to the female, so that 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 may female will be uh, will be producing his own young ones, his own healthy young. Ones. So this is a technique of increasing the nutrition of the female by offering himself. So these are some of the interesting things about the spiders I found. I explained this much because we uh, generally we have a feeling that spiders are useless. Now we come to the uh, diversity of, of uh, spiders in Western Guts. I want to show you a few examples of uh, respectively some main families I will discuss. This is the case of giant spider crab, uh, crab spider. This of giant crab spider, you can see that uh, giant crab spider is is present almost all over the world because it is very useful uh, in killing the cockroach. In the next slide, you can see that you are killing all the all the giant crab spiders in your in in your house. But this will be the effect. There will be lot of cockroach. So the heteropoda vinatoria that you find in your house is an important predator of cockroach. If you kill the spider, cockroaches in your house will increase. So this, in this way, the gained crab spider is a very efficient uh, predator of, that keeps the cockroaches in your house. Okay. So this is, uh, now I will show you another. This is another very common species present in our area, in, in our house. One is Arthema landa. The second one is also Prisa lion. These are commonly known by the name daddy long legs. And uh, these spiders are also known as synanthropic spiders. Synanthropic spiders means spiders associated with human beings. Wherever human beings are going, they are present. And right now, this Artema land is present all over the world. Except Antarctica, we can find Artema land in all the continents. And they are also known by the name Jane daddy long leg spiders. Then other is the Crossoprisa lioni. It's named after a person in British Army, known called Francis Lyon. Based main, main, after his name, the Crossoprisa name Crossoprisa lioni came. 
Now it has a box shaped ab abdomen, and because of that, these pirates are also known by the name box pirates. So in our house, they are very good, efficient predators of mosquitoes. So if you if you are killing, if you are cleaning all the all the spider webs in your house, they indirectly you are increasing the uh, mosquito population. So but so you have to decide whether you have to uh, keep your house uh, totally clean or have some mosquitoes in your you have more population of mosquitoes. In. So that is the two uh, synanthropic spiders. There these are these two spiders are uh, the are the two spiders common in our most people are, are afraid of spiders either because of the cetropoda venatoria or they consider spiders are ugly because of these two species like Archema and the cross of price. In the next slide, I will show you some beautiful spiders. They are known as the flower spiders and these belong to the family Thomisidae. There are two species is shown here. One is Thomisus lobosus, another genus is Camaricus formosus. These are the two species. These species are generally known as flower crab spiders. Because if you use the term crab spider, the heteropoda is also known as a crab spider. It is known as a giant crab spider. So here they have to make it more uh, ambiguous. We are using the term flower crab spiders. Now they are called as crab spiders because they move in a sideways crab like manner that is why they are known as a crab spider now they are ambushing spiders that is these spiders do not build any prey they wait in the flower in a, in a, in a secret very secretly concealingly when some prey come they will pounce up so that is why they are known as ambushing spiders now, one interesting thing you may might have noticed that if you have the habit of observing spiders, these crab spiders usually can remain in the same spot of a flower for several days. Sometimes even for several weeks, they will be sitting on the same part of the flower. So that, uh, so that, that kind of habit is observed in the use of this Thomisidae. So Thomisidae is a very large family. And several uh, several uh, several species are there in this family. Now I only show two or two three examples. Other than Thomisus, we have Cysticus, we have Rancinia, then we have Epidius, then we have Oxytate. Several genera are present in this of this uh, uh, Thomisidae family. Now going to the next one. These are called tend spiders. And this spiders belong to the family Aranidae. But interesting thing about these tender spiders is that these are quite common in our house garden. You can see that they make a tender like web. Below that tender like web, they will be lying upside down. So that is the nature of these tender spiders. And this is scientifically known as Cryptophora. Cryptophora is genus. There are several species, Cryptophora psychartosa. It is a common species. Now, the uh, interesting thing is that their web is non-sticky. But if you take the ordo web, the ordo web will be producing a sticky web. But in the issue of Cetophora, they make a permanent web which are non-sticky. And the researchers are considering this uh, Cetophora-like web actually the precursor of the simplified ordo web. So the evolutionary speaking, the, this kind of webs came into existence first before the orb web come. And Cetophora have the habit of uh, living in colonies. Some social nature is exhibited in the issue of Cetophora. Except, not exactly a case of social, social spider, not uh, like a social spider. You, you can always say that Cetophora webs are found, uh, Cetophora lives in colonies. Several Cetophora webs can be found in the same locality or in the same tree. So this is the Cetophora belonging to the family Aranidae. The next one is the case of a fishing spider. In the case of fishing spider, uh, many of you might have seen this is a very interesting species because it has the nature of uh, collecting fish or capturing fish because they will be waiting at the edge of a pool or edge of a river stream. 
when uh, when they detect some ripples on the surface of the water they will run across the surface and subdue the prey with the help of uh, by using its foremost or front legs so that is the way by which it is collecting or capturing fish first not fish means small fish and you and uh, other small insects present in the water so because of that these spiders are known by the name fishing spider the next uh, slide you can see that it's moving on the surface of the water so that is the reason why now this is this belongs to the family known by the pisauridae now pisauridae and lycosidae are closely related family many of you might have seen that the lycosids have the habit of carrying its egg sac at the back of their spinnerets you may if you have observed the pardosa you may you may have come across many pardosa spiders carry their egg sac in their spinnerets but in the case of pisauridae they are carrying these spiders are carrying their egg sac using the chelicerae so this is one easy method by which we can distinguish a pisauridae and the lycosids in the field pisauridae carries the egg sac in their chelicerae whereas the lycosids will be carrying their egg sac in their spinnerets so that is the case of this uh, what is known as the uh, fishing spider or thala earlier it was known as thalassus albostrum tex now it there now it has been changed to a new uh, another genus known as nilus albostrum tex so it's not very common in western ghats but still those who are observing keenly can see the i have seen come across this spider only few times now the next uh, species is the is the case of ant mimicking spiders ant mimicking spider here one uh, one photo i have shown is the so amicia potaceus another photo is that of rim arachne platelioides now in the use of ant mimicry ant mimicry is scientifically technically known hello prashant can you hear me hello hello sir yeah i can i can we can uh, i got one message that the your internet is so uh, unstable that's why yes, uh, yes sir okay uh, uh, in between it's slightly breaking but we can hear you yeah. no problem with voice and okay yes sir you, you can continue if there is any problem in voice please tell me sure 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 yeah okay so in the use of ant mimicry ant mimicry is the ant mimicry is scientifically known by name mimicomorphy why spiders are mimicking ants any of you may be thinking why spiders are mimicking the, the advantage of ants is that ants are very aggressive and ants are also not a tasty or unpalatable creature so that most of the birds won't uh, attack birds or most of the birds won't capture birds so this is it is this advantage of the ants that spiders are using so by by mimicking an ant spiders can protect himself or itself from the attack of birds so there are several methods by which spiders are mimicking ants one is morphologically visually it is mimicking as you can see in the so this uh, amicia as well as in the um, um, and the marine marine they are morphologically mimicking uh, so we scientists called by the name batesian mimicry another method of mimicry is by imitating the surface microstructure of an ant and this kind of mimicry is called by the name tactile mimicry now there is another way by which ants uh, spiders mimic the ant they they, they produce the uh, the ant like pheromones so that they have the same order we order for they, they have the same smell just like an ant so these are the three different methods by which spider generally mimic we can find around 300 species species of spiders mimic and so by morphological and all in some species we can find behavioral mimicry for example if you observe the mrimarachne the mrimarachne usually have the, the nature of creating an antennal illusion of the ant by waving their first or second pair of legs in the air so that kind of behavioral adaptation are also present so one the for the spider by mimicking an ant it can also escape from being attacked by spider hunting wasp so 
that is that is a why that is why in so many species of ant i told you up to 300 spider species uh, we have recorded are showing this ant mimicry or mimicry or mimicomorphy so that is the evolutionary reason why ant mimicry is so common so in the so tomicidae we can find ant mimicry maltesidae we can find ant mimicry corinidae we can find ant mimicry so it is a common strategy used by spider to escape from predators and also to adapt, feed on the ants. Now on the next slide, you can find a lynx spider. Lynx spiders are, the, are belonging to the family Oxyopidae. There are two species. Our most common genus is Oxyopus. Several species of Oxyopus all may appear quite similar to each other, but we have several species of Oxyopus. Bermanica is the Another here is Oxyopus shedua. This is another species. Then there is the Civtia viridana. These are the different species that you can find in the use of Oxyopid. So in the use of Oxyopid, they are popularly known as the lynx spider because they also have the ambushing nature, pouncing upon the prey by hiding under the leaves. So the, these lynx spiders are usually characterized by very prominent spines and also very long legs will be covered with the you know, many prominent or erect spines will be there. And they do not build any web and they have a very good eyesight. So they are by simply looking at the, pat the pattern of eyes, the oxyopids have a hexagonal like pattern to their eyes. We can easily identify the oxy in the field by simply if you have if you've seen one oxyopid once. You can easily identify any other object. The hexagonal pattern of the eyes is so characteristic to the family. So uh, it has a very good vision. So the, because and that because they are hunting spiders or ambushing spiders. So uh, in the in the so biological control, if there are a lot of oxyopus species in our agricultural field, it is one way it it can efficiently control the prey or pest population in that agriculture field. Another uh, genus is the PCTA, PCTA viridax. It's a green spider, but, but it has one interesting thing. It has the nature of spitting or spraying their venom at the intruders. Even if, if you, even if, 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 even on human beings, it can spray or spit its venom. But it's not that much common, still quite common in our area. It's a species, there are only one or two species of PCTAs there. But there are several species of lynx spider. Proxyopis are there. So that are the here you can find two two examples. One is the case of Bermanicum, and this is another beautiful one, Oxyopis Shida, Shida, quite common in our locality. Now I think in all parts of West Bengal, you can find these both these two species. Now go to another is the comb food spider. Comb food spiders belongs to the family Theridid. And they are known as a comb food spiders because if you look at the fourth leg, the tarsus of the fourth leg, it has a series of spines which appear like a comb. So that is why they are known as a comb food spider. The purpose of this comb food spider is that they use this comb to draw the sticky threads and to wrap the prey. It's after wrapping the prey with the silk, they are biting. So that is why they are not a comb books. And so this, uh, this comb is so characteristic. So by in order to identify this family, there is there, you have to first look at the fourth leg, whether this comb is present. If comb is present, 90, most of the time it belongs to the family. Now in the use of this spider, they are usually, they do not, uh, they do not build a proper web. They will build a irregular web. And they will be usually hiding inside some leaf retreat under which a spider often hangs upside down. Some 3,000 species are present in this family. Because to this family, the, the, the notorious black widow spider also belong. Now, uh, another characteristic of this family is that many are kleptoparasitic. In the, uh, that is, they will be stealing the food of other, other spiders. In the use of Nephila, if you look at the nephila, we can nephila are red in color, and the male of the nephila are red in color. Similar to that male, almost similar to that male, 
we can find also many small argyroides argyroides belong to the family thyroidae so they are kleptoparasitic that is they will be present in the web of some other species and what those spiders are that that host spider is collecting they will they will steal that is why that kind of nature is present in many family in many species of this family on by the name thyroidae now the next group is the here you can find another case this is the parasitoidae cells and the parasitoidae is a common genus of uh, thyroidae present in in western gets then the next one is the is a wolf spider now in the use of wolf spiders they are known as a wolf spider because these are very robust and fast moving hunters and they are and they have a good eyesight also just like the wolf is hunting and pouncing upon the prey these spiders are capable of chasing their prey for a short distance and capturing that is why they are known as a wolf spider the most common are the pardosa and the hippasa in the in the use of pardosa here you can see that this is the pardosa pardosa lives in a silken funnel silk funnel the uh, and uh, uh, when a grass uh, grass or for a small insect la lands on the web or near the what uh, uh, near the small lines attached to the web in the hippasa will immediately run and capture it so that is the nature of the hippasa spider the other common is the pardosa pardosa spider you can always find in on the grass moving here and there and they do not build any web so in this of pardosa uh, if you look uh, the, in the we can see that the, the newly hatched young ones or spiderlings can be seen riding on the back of their mother there there the you can you may have, have not shown an image yet and during this time the spiderlings or the young ones of the spider will not be feeding they will be simply surviving on the remains of the yolk present in the in their body so another thing is that if you, if you observe the mating behavior or product or breeding behavior when a male meet a female like this it, it always waves its palps and performs a series of push up movements by this push up movements the male and female can recognize each other So it is a behavioral behavioral mechanism by which the male uh, lycosid and female lycosid are signaling to each other that they belong to the same species. So if you look closely, there are a lot of interesting cases of behavior behavior where uh, spiders are using to uh, to improve their evolutionary uh, evolutionary you know the uh, yeah, survival chance. so that is the case regarding the bull spider the next one is the uh, aranid i think almost all of you may be know this spider here you can see the case of neoscona muttergi then there is another beautiful one is anapsion martitatum a very small spider killing a small maybe most of you may have seen in your house garden you can find all these species now another example is the case of eriovix legglaise this is also a common spider in your present in your house they will be having a white hairy like covering and this is a parabixia dehani parabixia this is a very it builds a very giant uh, big orb maybe 1 meter in diameter or more than 1 meter in diameter so these are the uh, here you can see the case of a web of a or the or aranid so in the use of aranid they are building a vertical orb web the purpose of this web is that web can act as an air filter so that it can easily trap the weak flying insects during the night and the, uh, there will be some sticky material also in the web that is sticky other thing is that the webs are usually rebuilt every day now if you look at the web of pyridid that is that there are cryptophora their webs are more or permanent they are not rebuilt every day but in the use of paravixia or in the use of other um, the neoscona they are they will be building the, their nest uh, their web each each even you can see that by 6 o'clock between 6 and 7 if you observe that the spiders will be building making their webs 
Now there are two families which are building the orb work, namely the Aranidae and second is the Tetragonidae, Tetragonidae. Both are related families, and they make a, their webs are provided with sticky material because uh, because the sticky nature of the web will be uh, uh, gone after a few days. That is why they are being rebuilt. And uh, in the morning we can see the spider will be eating their own web so that it can conserve the protein. Now there is another family known by the Euloboridae. Euloboridae also build an orb web, but its web is slightly different from the, uh, the, all the web built by the Aranidae. In the use of Aranidae, it's a very large family. More than 3,000 species are there built, and, and around 172 genera are there. And in, I think it's the third largest family there in the spiral world. Now, the another feature of the this orb is the presence of stably mentor. Here you can see species on Argio anas, which is a common species in the Western Gates. It's a crisscross. The purpose of this uh, stably mentor is to make um, it is it, to act as a marker so that birds won't be attacking the bird. And there are some other theories also that uh, says that this stability can act as a, a ultraviolet reflective thing so that uh, the prey can be attracted to the web. So there are different uh, theories. Nobody knows exactly why spiders are using this stability but uh, there, there would be some, uh, some advantage, but one, uh, two theories are that one for attracting the prey, another theory is that for protection from the birds. We don't know which, which one is the correct one. So that is the case. So this is the uh, Argiop anasidae, a common species in, in Western Gersa because they have a uh, pattern of sitting like an X, and sometimes also known as an X-ray spider because of the habit of sitting like this. These spiders are also known as X-ray spiders. Now we move to the another, that is a long-legged spider. These are known as a tetra, basically they belong to the family tetragonathidae. The, the, so the photo is that of Tetragonata viridorupa. So the upper surface is red. And uh, that is why the uh, uh, lateral side is green. Very easy to uh, identify in that way. This is one and species which, can, which we can very easily identify because of this green and red color. Now in this of Tetragonata, they are known as long-legged spiders because of very long legs. Another name is stretch spiders because they have an elongated body and their ability and their nature of stretching their four, four legs while sitting on a bark or, or sitting on a branch. That is why they are known as stretch spiders. It's a widely represented genus in the world, an important predator also. And you can usually see the stretch, uh, the stretch spiders or tetragonata in the paddy fields. Now, Tetragonata virdorufa, Tetragonata mandibulata, Tetragonata virisa. There are several species in there. It's a very uh, large genus also. And uh, the, because of there are, <coughs> they, they always appear to look like they have a very long jaw. So, these are the, some of the natures of the stretch spider. Another uh, related one is the uh, Tyloridae. Tyloridae also is uh, related with the just, uh, if, if, uh, the habits of Tylorid is also similar to that of Tragnathred, usually present near water bodies. They will be building a small web near the, uh, near the surface of the water, or a little above the water surface. You can find it in the, inside a uh, pond or inside a well. You can find this Tylorida ventralis. Then there is some other species called Tylorida striata is there. This is one picture of Tylorida ventralis. Now, now we move to another one is that is the sosis geniculate. Earlier I told you the case of Euloboridae. Euloboridae is also like Aranidae. They also build orb web. But in the case of Euro, Europe, their web is slightly different. The Euloboridae, as part of this species, is known as sosis geniculata. It's known as humped spider. You can see that the, it has a hump like abdomen. Uh, abdomen is quite uh, slightly humped. And it is also known as a gray house spider because of the color is gray. And this is a very uh, uh, cosmopolitan species present in almost most of the countries. And uh, regarding its nature, they are non-venomous. 
they because they do not have a venom gland and, and scientists believe this this lack of this venom gland is a secondary modification rather than a primary uh, evolutionary uh, modification uh, scientists personally believe that the venom gland disappeared due to some other reason which we do not know exactly now while collecting they they will then re they will spit their digestive enzyme into the prey and uh, and this digestive enzyme will liquefy the prey and the spider will suck in that is the nature of feeding that we can find in the issue of this euloboridae uh, or sources geniculata and the silk produced by this spider is a feathery or nature or we call by the name cribellate silk so that is the some some features of the euloboridae or grey house spider next we can find the jumping spider i knew i think you had already had a class we had a large diversity of jumping spider is one of the spider very easily you can identify this is vindella vitreta one and there is hylas semi cupris both are quite common in our western gods then there is a plexippus a common house spider this is the male and this is the female and some people who don't know about maybe considering this is another species this is another both actually belong to the same species this is a male and this is a female then uh, there is another one is the bavia insularis bavia insularis uh, sometimes known as a scorpion spider because of the loose long legs the front legs are they are also known by the name it's also common in our house garden then this is a beautiful spider character with a metallic bluish and reddish color on a silver semi glaucous now in this so uh, this jumping spider now jumping spiders are a very a large family around the 6000 species of jumping spiders are there and they are represented by some 600 genera that is if you take the total diversity of jumping spider 13% 13 percent of all spiders belong to the jumping spider now in the use of jumping spider jumping spiders are characterized by good eyesight and uh, they and they use this good eyesight for the courtship and for hunting and as well as for their navigation or moving so uh, and spanding spiders are eyes are capable of three dimensional vision also that means their eyes are capable of estimating the direction distance and also the nature of the just like we human beings are capable of three dimensional vision these hunting spiders eyes are capable of three dimensional vision that is why hunting spiders are good good at uh, capturing the prey with great precision because they and because of the good jumping ability they are known as a jumping spider and jumping spiders are also one uh, group of spiders which you can very easily identify because the front two eyes the anterior median eyes are so prominent this like two headlights of a car you can find the two eyes are very prominent by simply looking at the nature of this eyes we can immediately say whether this belongs to jumping spider or is belonging to saltis today or to some other family the next the spider that i want to show you is the case of two tailed spider they belong to the family known by the name cercilidae here you can see this is capturing a small cockroach then other is the it is a uh, this is uh, difficult to distinguish and they have the ability of changing color depending on the color of color of the bar now in this so two tailed spider because they, if you look at the nature of their uh, spinnerets they are very long that is why i'm um, appearing like two tails that is why they are known as two tailed spiders so in the here they 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 are not building any proper web in the next slide i will show you how they are making their web here you can see that this is the way they are capturing this is the two spinnerets are diverted uh, as are positioned in a diverged manner they will be spraying they will be casting the web on the over the prey and the web will be when then and then wrapped in this in a wrapped with the silk and they will then bite and capture the and they'll be feeding on the uh, prey that is a mechanism by which is a hercilidae 
or two-tailed uh, spiders are capturing. The next family that I would like to show you is the case of the Secretae. This Secretus uh, torbus, it's a very uh, widely represented family. Uh, it is present in many parts of Asian region. Then Ficinia travancorica. Ficinia travancorica. The only two genus are there in the ISO Secretae. Now, there are not many, only two genera are there. It's a, but 70 species are there in this secret. Eh? And uh, uh, evolutionary, the recent study shows that secret eh, are very closer to oxyupidae uh, or lynx spiders as well as lycusidae and also pisauridae. Now, just like uh, uh, pisauridae, the secret species also carry the egg sac in their chelicerae. That is why uh, we uh, phylogenetically they are placed near to the pisauridae. And, and and another thing is that the secrets construct their horizontal webs and uh, in a, in a way, lays like horizontal webs. Usually you can find this web usually in forest below the large but, uh, buttress, large trees with the buttress root. Or in the, if you go to forest in, in, in the so some trees, there will be a hollow area below their uh, bar. In that hollow area, you can usually see this uh, secret torus. And Ficinia are present in many areas. I have found the Ficinia in my house, uh, house also. And, and, but uh, several species are, uh, this uh, one species of species only present. They are present in several areas of South Kerala. So the next family that I want to show you is the case of yellow sac spiders or Plubionidae. Here you, you, you can see the nature of them. They will have the habit of rolling these leaves in a tube-like structure or a sac-like structure. And inside that tube or sac, the spiders are living. That is why these spiders are known by the name uh, um, sac spiders. And they are coming in several colors or several shades, like a green, sometimes brown, sometimes yellow. So these are the common colors. And they are also hundreds on our, our usual hundreds or predators. And uh, uh, two important genus uh, present in sac spiders are the Kiracanthium and Clubiona. Uh, so here you can see the one, the one is the Kiracanthium, other is the Clubiona. So now, now we go to another family that is the case of the social spider. Here you can find an enlarged view of the social spider. The next slide you can find the web of a social spider. Now in the use of a social spider, the the photo that I have shown is the case of Stigo diaper saracinorum. This is the Indian cooperative spider. Now, in the use of this family, they, these spiders always live together, just like your honeybees. They have a social nature. They cooperate uh, with each other in the building of their web and also in the prey capture and also in the rearing of the young birds. So, so that social nature is present in. in Prey capture and reproduction, we call it by the name uh, social spider. You can see uh, they are building a very huge web so that there is better chance that we can collect more number of prey. So, in order to increase the prey capturing e efficiency, they are making a very giant web so that they can capture more insects. That is the advantage. So, having a larger web means they can subdue or they can attack a larger prey and and also uh, collect more number of, or capture more number of prey that is why they are building a larger prey a larger web so in order to make a larger web they need the participation of several individuals so that is the evolutionary advantage in terms for that is why this social nature is present in around 23 species of spiders in and in, 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 in our, our 11 genera 23 species of spiders captured in 11 genera are uh, and found in eight families are exhibiting the social nature so uh, one advantage is in these social spider are these spiders are tend to be smaller because there are small several individuals even though just like you take the case of ants ants are always smaller but they are the being, though, even though they are smaller, there are several individuals of them, and so that they can capture larger, larger prey. Same strategy is also adopted by the social spider. Even though they are smaller in size, 
they can capture a larger prey because they participate or cooperate with each other for capture of a larger prey. Now, another family is the is of Linifidae. Linifidae is a very large family. There are, there are a lot of species of Linifidae. In India, Linifids are poorly studied. Very no, because the difficulty of identifying this Linifids. That is one reason. So if you go to the salty sedep, Salty they are much more easier, easier to identify. They are more common. Even to capture linifids, we have to start extensively. We have to check in the litter. We have to check in the bar. So just like salty they we cannot easily identify. You can easily collect or identify linifids. That is one reason maybe very few species of linifids are discovered. Worldwide, around more than 4,600 species of linifids belonging to 617 genera are discovered. But from India, very few species are discovered because uh, not uh, even uh, as in the issue of spider generally, most of our studies on the spiders are limited to prominent visible spiders, just like Aranidae or Tetragonathidae or larger spiders like uh, Therapusidae. But regarding smaller spiders, we don't have much study. Like Linifid is a good example because it's very difficult only by the help of a good microscope, we can, we can even see a little bit properly. That is why most of the field workers are never interested in studying the leaf and they are not as attractive as jumping spiders. Now they build a sheet web and uh, that is why they are not a sheet to spiders. They are not sheet to be with. Then they are more, their diversity is more common in temperate region, especially in the areas uh, beyond 60 degrees latitude, we can find high diversity. And uh, sometimes they, uh, they, the web has no, they do not make any retreat in the web. And many of them are, are lying upside, in, upside down below their sheet. So this is the case of the sheet viewers. Now we will be coming to another area that is the is of tarantulas. In the use of tarantulas, um, if there we have <clears throat> a lot of species. I think already you had a class on tarantulas by Manju Silva. He might have discuss, uh, discussed a lot of things. So I am not uh, going into the details of the tar. Here you can see the Poisilotheria. Poisilotheria has several species. In Kerala itself, we have Poisilotheria striata, Poisilotheria regalis is there, then Poisilotheria rutilata is there, then Anima vilasmica is there, and going to Andhra Pradesh, we have Animetallica is there. So there are some seven or eight species of Poisilotheria here. Yeah. These are very beautifully colored, and because of that, they are, they are known as, sometimes known as ornamental tarantulas. And uh, uh, they are very fast moving uh, animals, and they have very highly potent venom compared with other tarantulas. Right now, they are protected under sites. Now, they are known as a tiger spiders because of the presence of this uh, pattern, this kind of pattern. So in this, here it is a bluish. In some, most of the time it is yellowish and uh, brown. So that is why they are known as tiger spiders. And they are nocturnal. And you can usually, in these of the Poisilotheria, these are arboreal spiders. They are only found in three, maybe some six feet above the, the Above the uh, above uh, above a tree on small small holes in the tree, we can find this species. It's very difficult to see and also collect the species. Now, other thing is they do not make any cobweb, and they are they just like ambushing spider. Now, right now the Poisilotheria uh, is classified as an endangered species or critically endangered species. There are several uh, because uh, only if you go to the forest. One problem is even if you if a Poisilotheria is present here, we may not be able to see it because we have to specifically look for it, especially at night. Then only we will be able to see. So right now it is an endangered species. Now one more species I would like to introduce you for conclude. This is the case of uh, first the spider. I have not seen this spider, but I have uh, had a uh, 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 report by one of my friends that he had seen a web like this one. And I probably believe thinks that it is this pairs web spider. The advantage in this case of this pairs web spider, they will be living, they will be making a tube like web. 
and they will be lying inside this tube when some insects fall, sit on fire come and uh, walk on this uh, tube they will uh, they will make sting it from inside the tube and capture it and take uh, take the prey into the web and and feed on it so that is why it is on a spider web it is a very primitive spider more primitive than our theraposid and they belong to the family etipidae now one interesting thing about the etipidae is that in some areas of europe especially in carpathian mountains there people will be using this etipus web as a as a anti coagulant because they take the web and if there is some uh, bleeding they will apply the web of this etipus on the on the site of injury so that the the blood will clot faster because this silk is rich in vitamin k so that can increase the uh, that increase the speed of clotting so in this way this is another possible use of spiders uh, for the for the uh, for human being if you if you properly discover all these things we can uh, uh, we we, uh, we we can make use of spiders in a better way so with this i would like to end my presentation and uh, if you have any more uh, questions you can ask otherwise we can end uh, our uh, discussion thank you once again and thank you to prashant and to uh, abhijit for inviting me for this talk thank you uh, thank you sunil sir for a wonderful session it was really really impressive so uh, we have few questions now so okay. i will go through the, them one by one Uh, arjit patra is asking does spider net contains any chemical that preserves their prey yeah generally spider nets have an antibacterial property uh, that is why i showed you one slide in the beginning that spiders are covering the uh, prey with the uh, with the covering of the silk the silk has an antibacterial property So that antibacterial property may be the reason why we can prevent the prey from decay. So we we need to research to do a lot of research on those aspects. Right now we are focusing our research on mainly on the diversity. But if we go to the molecular, especially the biophysical and biochemical side of spiders, there are a lot of areas where which can be used. That that is one area it can be for the for example this so or ETP also. the atypus i show you that that yeah, when the atypus web is placed on the site of injury it can prevent clotting maybe that silk may be having some antibacterial property also that is why the people there are using it for the wound healing okay thank you sir uh, one more question by uh, charan kumar sir what is the methodology to study spider diversity in forest ecosystem yeah it's um, it's very difficult. usually we go go by visual search that is the most common because if you go to go for for other like transect or other thing man most of the time it man of transect or quadrant study it is not very effective we use you most of the time we go for visual search that is we go to an area and search that at area extensively and we try to collect what our species to present there that is the but there then that is the that only that method practically will be possible or if you go for quadrant or transect study it will it is very difficult in the is in the so certain other organism that may be okay but for the is uh, spiders i don't think it is for, for maybe for one species we can find a quadrant or transect study but if you want to study several species of spider that such study may not such method may not be possible just for the visual sir because in almost all the papers we read that is the common method used for spider studies okay thank you sir uh, vivek chandran is asking what makes spiders so successful they are much more species rich compared to other arthropods spider occupy yeah. every niche available yeah the one reason because uh, this evolution of spider and evolution of insects both uh, took place at the same level that is 
increase in spider diversity has uh, has favored the evolution of insects also i think uh, i think uh, there are some studies which shows that i cannot say but they they say that when spider the, the orbuvab the orbuvab evolution of of course the insect diversity has increased actually after the evolution of the orbuvab so uh, that is so and the other thing is that the spiders are the only group of animals which can capture insect efficiently so that is one reason why so when there is a, a increase in the diversity or increase in the number of insect that also promoted more diversity of spider so that is the only group which can effectively control insect that may be the reason why there are a lot of spiders and spiders are also Uh, be uh, capable of surviving in, in several different habitats we can find even except antarctica we can find spiders in most of the other continents yes sir exactly so i think the last question is from uh, abhijit sir uh, can you explain about uh, habitat of uh, sacra species and phasinia the sacred species i told you i most of the time i have seen sacred species in if you go to the forest of kerala in any forest any part of the forest in tall trees as you take some tall trees especially at the bottom of the tall trees will be find some empty hollows and these sacred species are usually found in this empty hollows now in the use of phasinia i found phasinia in two areas one in cochin in my in my home form i we uh, i began my house then another is in kolutpura and i find found this a phasinia species and phasinia species uh, uh, they they usually present in tree bark not uh, not bark they will be producing some you know not very uh, uh, the fish shabby type of bird the untidy shabby web will be producing with the phasinia that is i have that is the my experience regarding the phasinia but they are not very common everywhere this phasinia is very it's very not easy to collect phasinia only in two places i have seen phasinia so far okay sir uh, thank you so much for answering the question and uh, uh, end of the session uh, chinmay will be doing the vote of thanks in my over to you thank you prashant uh, dr sunil joseph sir thank you so much it was such an insightful uh, insightful uh, presentation starting from the basics like it was for everyone not for some experts or anything as such but it completely like it was for the general audience i think everyone got to know why they are why even all the common spiders have got their name how to the feed all the general behavior everything was like perfectly covered and yeah it was an amazing uh, presentation sir thank you so much and yeah, even you. for like uh, even at the beginning like uh, why spiders are important and uh, the um, and even the mimicry and even what uh, 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 kleptoparasitism uh, why do they do it and uh, why the males are smaller than the females and Well, many things that we didn't know it was all excellently covered thank you so much sir okay thank you yeah uh, uh sunil sir thank you once again for uh, joining us and uh, uh, sharing your uh, l- sharing the information that we actually didn't know and uh, it was wonderful session thank you once again sir okay. uh, thank, thank you, you all sir. yeah thank you thank you thank you everyone for participating okay thanks so thank you all the participants who have joined here and made this event successful thank you all and have a nice day we will wind up this session now abhijit sir we will wind up the session right ah uh, yes prashant we will wind up yes thank yes, you yes. thank you everyone thank you so next saturday we will meet again at 6:30 6 o'clock yeah. sorry yeah yes. on social spider by dr divya uma yes thank you thank you thank you one and all